Hi everyone, welcome to the new monthly project. This is number 14 and we're doing movie and TV fan art. This is a really fun theme because we can actually do, you know, it could be a favorite moment from a movie or a TV show, anything really. I'm a massive fan myself of all of these kind of things. I've been doing fan art for years now. So I think it's actually a really good way to improve your skills and uh, get better is to draw something that you'd love, that you're passionate about, a movie or a TV show. That's one of the biggest things that I'm passionate about. And I just think it's a great way to move forward with your art. And it's all about motivation, you know, you've really, you're a fan of something, you love it. So that motivation is there and that's all you need. And these monthly art projects are a part of my Patreon. So each month I'll set out a theme and I'll send a brief out. Uh, people will go off and draw for the month, get creative and get the juices flowing. And then they'll submit by the end of the month. And then I'll review each piece here in a video. And I'd like to announce the three winners of the critiques this month. So I've gone through all of the submissions and I've picked three out. So these three I thought would be really good for this uh, video. So Daniel has done Harry Potter here. Uh, we've got Jose who's done, uh, this is from Doctor Who. And then you've got Rob who did uh, Bruce Lee over here. So I just thought these are three really good examples that I could highlight on some different things here. You know, like uh, Jose with composition, uh, Rob with some anatomy stuff and, and Daniel as well with some technical stuff. So we'll get into that soon and uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Okay, so we're going to get straight into it today and let's see what we've got. All right, first up is Charlie, and he's done the Ghostbusters, that classic scene of the Marshmallow Man and them taking him down. So, really cool. I like this artwork. Let's get a closer look. Yeah, really nice work there. You've done some really nice details. Look at those backpacks. Really nice details through everything there. So, that's really nice to see, and I absolutely love... I love this setup. I love the scene. You've got a nice perspective. So, yeah, really well done with that, Charlie. I love that one. All right, next up is Matt, and you've done uh, Scarlet Witch, well, Zombie Scarlet Witch, I should say, from uh, What If, which is a really cool show, by the way. I've been watching that. Nice artwork. I like this. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. And it's also got that creep factor, that super creep factor. So good work there, Matt. Very vibrant. And uh, yeah, nice. Nice work. And next is William. You also have done What If, and uh, so this is Zombie Cap. Zombie Captain America, which was really cool to see as well in the show. And I just think this is great. Very vibrant. You've got this, and I love how he's just coming straight at you. <laughs> it looks like he's about to take a bite out of me. So, yeah, I love that. Really nice work there. And, um, yeah, super clean. I like these textures that you've been putting through your art as well. So, really nice work there, William. Absolutely love that. All right, Sai, you're at it again. Look at this. This is awesome. I absolutely love your um, caricatures. You, you make them look exactly like the, the character. I can see who it is exactly. Look at this. I love it. Such nice details in there. Really nice work. That's from the show Blackish. And you've also done another one as well. So here's another piece that you submitted. So I just absolutely sends out the work so quick every month. Like it's within days of the, uh, the brief going out. So yeah, really nice here. I like that. This is beautiful work. Absolutely beautiful. Very nice work, Cy. I love it. I can't wait to see some more. Uh, next up is John. And here we go. We've got classic Darth Vader from Star Wars. Uh, really nice looking pose. I love the, uh, the perspective on this as well. Looks very menacing. You know, you've got that intimidating kind of angle. You should be really happy with this. Nice work there, John. I love it. And I know you mentioned you could, didn't have time to do the background, but that's fine. That's, it works well with just the red and the back as well. So, yeah, nice work. Awesome, John. And Jordan has sub submitted this mammoth of a picture. Have a look at this. So we've got Vegeta there from Dragon Ball Z. We've got a couple of video game ones here, but you've also you've, you've got a mix of everything. TV, movie, um, stuff. We've got Doctor Strange. Mandalorian looks great there with um, Baby Yoda. Love that pose of him. That's really cool. Awesome. Is that Watchmen? Really nice work here. You've done so much. This is a huge piece. I reckon that would have taken you ages. So, yeah, really nice to see that one, Jordan. You've done a really good job there. And next is Justin. You've done this huge X-Men piece. This is massive. So much involved in this. You've got Wolverine, Cyclops, Rogue, Beast. You've got Gambit, Storm, Xavier, and Jean Grey. 
Awesome. Massive piece. Really big one there. So it's really nice to see you putting so much effort into all of that. That's really nice. Good one, Justin. And next up is Carl, and you've done uh, the Matrix Reloaded fan art here. <laughs> one of my favorites. And I've just finished watching all three of them, the trilogy, because I'm amping myself up for number four, which is coming soon. Um, I'm very excited. So, yeah, really nice to see this. Um, I really like that. Good Neo there. It does look like him too. So you've got that likeness there done uh, pretty well there too. So I like that. Yeah, nice to see some fan art on that. Good one, Kyle. And next is Chris. You've done... Uh, this is Teen Titans from the uh, 2003 TV show uh, you mentioned. So I like your Robin. That's really cool. Nice to see that. Yeah, it's really good to see them all together here like this. You've got some cool poses going on. Some nice action poses. Yeah, nice work there, Chris. Good one. All right, this is an interesting one. This is from Paul. And he's done a, a, an image here. You can have a look. I'll zoom in. Which is really cool, this like black and white noir style. So it's actually based off an old Bonnie M song called Ma Baker. Uh, it's about a woman and her four sons who were a gang of criminals in Chicago in the 1930s. So it's like true story stuff. And um, it's just, yeah, I really love that you've gone to the effort to bring this to life. You know, to really create this kind of image of all this. And um, yeah, so there's, there's her and her four sons. Uh, looking awesome. They've got their Tommy guns. I just love this setup too. You've got some really nice perspective, the angle, the energy. It's all like angled out as if they're just taking over the whole town, you know. <laughs> it's really cool to see. So really nice work. Good effort there as well. You've just done this whole special scene and and there's a big story behind it. So I absolutely love that. Good. I've got to give you props for that, Paul. You've done a really good job on that. And next up is Juan, and he's done... This is this is actually from an anime from, I think, the late 90s called Slam Dunk. So you, you've done this one here, which looks really cool too, by the way. I like your I like your artwork. You've done a really nice job here on this. So, um, and I can see that anime style as well. You've got this really cool texture that's going through the back, which I really like. Yeah, so nice work on that one. You've found something that you love and really you know, done some fan art on it. And that's what it's all about. You really got to get that passion, you know, find something that you really like and then bring it to life in some art. And it's, that's what I've always found. Just great practice, uh, doing that kind of stuff. So yeah, really nice work there. And, um, yeah, I love it. Good work. And next is Aaron. So let's have a look at this. This is a clash between Rick and Morty and back to the future <laughs> kind of talking to each other there. Um, so you've done a lot of work there. Definitely, you know, you've got a few scenes and things like that. So it's not easy to do it like that. And I love the idea that you've got behind this. Yeah, nice work, Aaron. I love it. Good work. And this is the last of the overall general submissions. Uh, we've got Jeremy Clark here. This is from an anime. Well, I think the, the girl is called Chihiro. I'm not sure if that's pronounced right. But yeah, really cool to see. You've done your own kind of little take on it. Your own little spin. I like that. You've got a really nice, unique style. I love your stuff. So... Yeah, really nice to see this. So good work there, Jeremy. I love it. Okay, time to get into some critiques now. So I, like I said before, I've picked three out of all of the submissions to have a critique. And here's the first one. So I'm going to go with Jose. And you have done uh, Doctor Who. So this is amazing. Have a look at this. This is the final submission. And um, I just am blown away by this. I just think this is an absolute masterpiece. So good. So damn good. Look at the detail as you zoom in um, and everything. The colors, the rendering. You've got a really nice background as well. You've even got action going on in the background. You've got this guy up here um, and just blasting away. I just, oh, This is just too good. Absolutely amazing stuff there, Jose. I think this is great. So let's get into the critique a bit more um, and I'll try and see what we can do to help you a bit more or guide you in some different ways, maybe some new techniques, I don't know. So I just want to show you, this is your inks that you sent earlier in the month as well that you had done. And this is flawless. Like if you have a look at these inks, so they're tiny pix pixelated because I did take it from Discord and it wasn't the highest resolution, but I'm also going to use these to show you some things as we do the critique. And I just want to point out, because your inks are just so damn good, if we really just hone in on the colors even more, um, and you just put them two together, you'll be unstoppable. So I just I want to show you what we could do to help you in that area. 
Alright, so I've got your inks. Um, what if I get the character art underneath and I just want to try and do a few things here and there. So when I look at this art, I can't help but feel like it needs to be more vibrant or colourful or something like that. Um, I found a few references of Doctor Who stuff online. Now, I haven't followed the show myself, but I get the feeling like I feel like it should be more vibrant and I think we could do some more colourful stuff to make everything pop more. Um, I feel like the colour tone in this might just be a little bit too... Um, grim or in the darker kind of gloomy kind of stage and I feel like when I look at your inks the first thing I thought of was like man that would really look so nice if it just had you know some really nice bright colors and just light it up a little bit more um, to get that pop by the way I'm sorry if it's a little bit noisy behind me um, it's really heavy rain outside right now and like I said, this is just my opinion. Your work is as perfectly fine as it is, and it's, a, like I said, an absolute masterpiece. So what I'm doing is just a spin on it. So what I'm going to be doing is more of just a, a take on it to give you a variation, you know? Okay, so I'm just mucking around with it a little bit more, and I've just realized I think it might actually better with like a day, uh, be better with a day scene, kind of like this, maybe daylight. I've just found a bit of a sky that I used from one of my old pictures. Uh, so I'm just going to muck around with that and see what that might look like. Um, I'll just move that there. There we go. And I just need to do more color adjustments on like these buildings and things to try and make it look a bit better. Um, yeah, so basically I've just been doing some color adjustments trying to show you how it might look in maybe daylight um, Because the idea is to get a better overall kind of feel on your artwork So, you know when you at first glance I'm talking about You know, you want to have that oomph you know, that kind of wow, you know Really light up your characters because what I was trying to say before is your line work was just just so good And I really want to have that kind of shine all that line work. So when it was just I just feel like it was just a bit too dark um, and it can hide all that nice line work that you've got when it was like this before. Uh, let me lighten up the characters um, and I'll show you how, you know, they could look as well. See if I literally just go levels and I grab, this is just for your characters and I'll lighten the mid tones right up because I really want to keep all that nice dark rendering. Um, and I might even lighten up just a bit the full shadows. So it's like that and then press OK and then I'll just go hue saturation. I'm going to bump the saturation up to keep that ambience. We want to keep it just like the background. Uh, and I'll just show you that's already just that is amazing like the way it is. Look at look at all your hard work shining now. So that's what I mean. Show off what you can do a bit more with lighting it up a bit more vibrance. I just think that would have really topped this piece off. Have a look at that from a distance it's like boom look at that that is amazing that's already just blowing my mind so what I might do now is really lighten them out I want to make them pop out a little bit more so if I make a new layer above that I'll just quickly lighten some stuff up there we go so just a that was just a few extra adjustments just on the characters to really lighten them up make them feel like they're in that day setting I also lit up the ground a bit more because it's daylight and it's not going to be darkened. So I think the last touch, let's just um, make this center focus, this, this green glow. So I'll just make that a little more intense like that. Even bring it out to the side a little bit more and that side, I think, just to get that nice intensity of that glow. All right. So I think that's going to help. Um, that's just another variation. So let me know what you think about that. There we go. So what I'm getting at here with this critique is basically just um, I really want you to show off your line work a bit more. I feel, I feel like before it was just a bit too dark. So everything, the the rendering and the, the color choices kind of take over. They kind of take over a bit more uh, and it, it just dims down everything. Even though you've got this beautiful rendering in there, um, overall from a distance, you can kind of see it's just, it just gets a bit dark and a bit muddy. So that's the only thing I wanted to bring out was that um, so that when we lighten it up, maybe in a day setting, like just just the choices, the color choices, I feel like that would really make your work shine. Yeah, like I said, your inks are in, like absolutely perfect. So I just feel like we need to make the most of that. This is a professional level. This is this line work. So really, really make the most of it. 
Um, and then it's just your color choices. So I, I recommend doing something that's going to be more lit and vibrant. It just makes the overall picture a lot more fun and vibrant, you know, those color choices. So uh, yeah, before and after, let's have a look. So I'll just zoom in. So we've got before and then after. So before and after. And I'm really loving how the these black shadows of the rendering are showing really well now. So before that, that's kind of hidden, that black render and things like that. So after, I just love it. I love how that's working now. And it, you know the the skin tones and everything is uh, is really making your your line work shine. So yeah, I hope that helps. That's that's really all I have to say about your work. Um, that's that's all I've got to critique about it. I've got no other comments. The perspective is perfect. The angle you've executed it absolutely perfect. The sh foreshortening is just right. I don't have any anything else to say about anything on here. It was really just the uh the approach i think the the overall choice of color and everything was the only thing i had to say okay i hope that helps jose uh like i said your work's amazing so keep it up and um yeah love your work and next up we got daniel so daniel submitted some harry potter fan art i'm a, I'm a big fan of harry potter myself i love it i've, I've watched all of them with my son yeah this is good mate and um i think i can help you a bit here as well so there's a few things we'll get into. Let's have a look. We'll dive straight into the critique. Now I can see the line works um, getting there. You've got like some nice bold lines and then you've got them tapering out, uh, things like that. So that's good. Keep that kind of stuff up. I really like that. Um, the, I think the main thing here is we just need to fix up a few structural issues. So things like the hand, um, we just need, if we just had a little bit more attention into the, the anatomy and, and just the structure, I think we'll be all right. And uh, just a few things with the body as well. So I'll just show you. I'm going to do a bit of a liquefy on this. And it's mainly just the head. So I want to fix this head a bit more. Uh, I feel like it's it just needs to be pulled out a bit more. We need, we need more of the top of his head. Like really, really lift that right out. He needs to have a lot more um, head under that hair there. So we're going to pull that out. Uh, and then we'll bring the face down. So there we go. Um, I'll just press OK. So I'll just show you the difference there. So have a look. So uh, that was before and then after. So it's really just a, a structure thing. So we kind of, it's, it's more the anatomy or the proportions. So I basically wanted to add, you know, the, the skull up through here. So we need to make sure there's a lot of head underneath that hair. Um, now that hair actually, I, I would say even needs to be much thicker. But for now, let's just stick with this and I'll show you. So there, do you see that structure that I've just put through? And I'll just show you with the a bit of a white backdrop so it's a bit easier to see. Um, but yeah, you see that structure there. And then if I hide the head, and then if I take it back to the original, you can kind of see we really need to have a bit more structure through there. And then you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine after that. So just a bit more structure through that head there. Yeah, as well, the, the hair, much thicker. If you, if you watch any Harry Potter movie, you'll notice that he really does have really thick hair as well, like super thick. So I've just bumped that up a bit there. So I'll just merge that. There we go. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is just the hand as well. So let's try and get a bit of structure into that hand. So when I'm doing the hand, uh, I like to think of it kind of like, let's do one big like chunk up here and it will bend over kind of like that and then up and around, okay? You see that kind of shape there? It's kind of like a pair of binoculars or something, <laughs> you know, that kind of shape. So I'll just tidy that up so you can see it a bit better. And it's kind of got the perspective of um, this way, okay? So that's the way the fingers are all gonna go. Now, let's draw the four holes for the fingers. So, so kind of like that, four fingers. Um, and then we'll just, just like, You've got it already. You've got the perspective as if we're going to have it shooting up one, two, three, four, kind of out that way. And then we'll like bend that one down a little bit like it usually should. Um, yeah. And then do what you've done. Like you're mostly, get, you've got the idea. We just need the structure. You see how it can kind of come across just, just a little unsure. So we kind of want to clean that up so that it's more accurate. So let's draw the sections of each finger. You can even just rough them in really f like first. 
but we do want to break them into sections. So draw them as cylinders because they're coming towards you. Let's just draw three cylinders stacked on top of each other. And each of them is the break in the fin finger or the, or the bend. And the next one will just go nice and straight. Let's just do it straight as a cylinder and then we'll bend it a little bit as we go. We'll just chuck the end of the cylinder up there. Maybe I'll just do the same up here. So that's the end of the cylinder. And you can see how, as I'm pointing the fingers out, like we need to have that bendy perspective as if one's kind of going out that way and one's kind of going out that way, okay? So that's that's what you kind of need to think of as well. And we'll go one, do the brakes now. So one and two there. All right, and then the last one. Now for the bottom half, we need, uh, the main part is just this, this part here. We really need to lower the knuckle of that thumb. So that thumb needs to go down more. So we need to bring that down. So it'll actually go down like that and then come out. And I like to do like a big shape like this, like that muscle that comes out of your palm and then up. Kind of like think of it like a diamond shape. You see this diamond like one, two, three like that. But I like to kind of nearly oval it or almost. And then we'll have the thumb kind of come out of here as a cylinder. Let's do that. So we'll point that out. Let's have it kind of coming at us as well. And that's only got two breaks in it. So there we go. Uh, and then we'll have the bottom, the other palm kind of just fill in that gap there. Just So you can see the three main sections we've got in the hand. We've got one here, which is this big yellow one here. So let's just think of that. You've got this one here, that diamond kind of shape. And then you've just got that little one down there that'll fill in that little area down there. Okay? So think of those three bits at, at this angle. This is just at this angle. And the perspective is definitely coming at us like this. Okay? And now that I've got that structure, let's tidy it up a bit. And I'm going to think of each of those breaks in the in the fingers as if there's a break there. But maybe draw the breaks first so you know where they're going to go. Just little nicks. I don't do like full round ones like this. I'm not going to draw those full cylinders. I'm just doing little nicks where the folds and the bends are. If you look at your finger as you bend it, you can kind of see that. And now I'm drawing. And at the top, I'm not going to draw that cylinder there. That's just a guide. I'm actually going to round it out. You won't even have any kind of... Uh, end tip to that. That's more to do with shading, I think. But for now, let's do this. And just draw each each chunk as, as a fold, like have a little bump in it. You see how I've got that little bump there, and then I might have another bit of skin coming over and around that. And that's going to show, you know, that that's a folded finger. Keep in mind that he is a teenager, so he's not going to be too wrinkly or have any of that. So to, let's just keep little tiny. We're going to keep it to the, to the minimum. And maybe just do the webbing in the fingers, like just have it kind of curl up a little bit. And this one here is a good example of that. You can now see the top knuckle of that finger because of the angle. This one's pointing more out towards this way, whereas this one's coming almost directly at us. So that's why they look a bit different. Now, a really good example is, um, is these bottom folds in the fingers. Make sure to, to have that perspective read really well. Draw these little folds here, you see, the bottom of the cylinders. I like to circle them out, and it really does show that that's, you know, those fingers are tucked into this meaty bit on top of the hand that's kind of coming at us. So I'm going to draw that as well. Like, that's just a big fold there, so a big chunk of meat coming out the side, you know, and then we'll fold that up. So I'll really tuck it up, and then just draw, like, two lines underneath, and that'll show, you know, they're broken lines, but they they show that there's a bit of a fold in the in the meat of the hands on the inside of the palm you can even do another one there and then just slowly just come up and then have that connect back to where it belongs and then let's just follow the rest of our guides and then I like to do just a couple of little details on the inside like a fold maybe in the middle of the palm there just do smaller little nicks and details and things like that and that'll really refine it so what I'm trying to get out here is basically just um, focus on some structure. So using this guide, like, you know, sketch it out first, do some basic structure structure stuff, and then go over the top again. Re that'll really help you. Do the same with the head. So that head structure that I had before, um, basic kind of structure, and then go over the top again and refine. Just keep refining and refining as you build on top. Um, and your work is, is just going to be phenomenal. I also just think the hand is a bit too big. So what we'll do, I'll, I'll just tilt it a little bit more as well. I feel like it needs to be tilted. Um, and I'd shrink it down just a bit. The foreshortening, you still want to have that, but not so big. I think it's just right about there, actually. Perfect. 
Um, and I'll just fix up the bits in the back there. There we go. And I also moved this arm back. I'll just this arm here. I thought I thought maybe we'll tuck it back a little more, um, as if he's coming more directly at us rather than having out the side too much. And that way you'll get a better crop too. So he's more centered now. Um, yeah. So you see what I mean, Daniel? It's it's just um, you're not far off. Like if you just had a bit more structure in your in your initial artwork. Um, and then build on top of it with your these nice inks and things that you've got going. You've even got some nice color choices here, like the skin tones and stuff are spot on. I mean, have a look at this. All I did was structure your work uh, and put the structure in myself. But you did all the all the rest is you. That's all you. So um, this is the kind of thing that you could uh, you can look at. I hope this I hope this gives you a visual of your potential because you are you are doing really well and I think that you can do some really great things so um, I hope this gives you the push you know so let's have a look at it before and after of the original and just see see what we can do uh, see what we've done uh, through this so originally you see what I mean with the structure so we just need to focus on some structure so before and after and like I said I just tidied up the hand and showed you you know with the structure what we could do so um, and the head as well. I haven't touched the body. Um, everything else is fine. As you can see, it's just a few things. So yeah, I hope that helps, Daniel. Um, and I want to see um, how you go. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you go. So don't ever give up. I think you're doing great. And uh, yeah, you can do some great things. So keep it up, Daniel. And I hope that helps. Thank you. All right. Next is Rob. You've done Bruce Lee. This is awesome. Uh, I love this fan art. I think this is this is amazing. I, I think you've done a really good job and you've got such a cool style. I love your style. Now, you know, from the start, there isn't much really to say about this because that's an awesome piece of artwork right there. You know, that's amazing. But I'm hopefully going to show you some tips, maybe um, just some advice on anatomy, things like that, that might help you in the future as well. So let's get into a bit and I'll just show you just what I can see through my eyes. Um, but like I said, uh, this is amazing as it is, okay? So it's, it's just like a style take, you know, this is your thing. So I don't see anything immediately that would make me think, oh, you know, something's crazy or out of place. That's not what I'm saying here. I think this passes as a really good piece of artwork right now. So, but I'll just show you what we can do. So I'm just gonna hide the background just so we can see things a bit better. Um, I've taken things off into sections. Now I think, First thing I can kind of notice is probably just a, needs a little bit more waist. So I'm going to lower that down. I might even just do a bit of a warp. Um, bring it up just slightly. I like the energy that's in that. So I want to keep that as best as I can. I feel like that leg might be just a little bit too big. So I'm going to take that down a little bit. And I feel like just this arm here is probably just a bit big. So I've just sized that down just tiny, a tiny bit. Now I understand that's foreshortening, but um, I just want to make sure it's just, just right. And I've also just warped it in just a little bit. You see that? Just warped it in. Just bringing it in just a little bit there. I feel like I need to bring this bicep back out now. I haven't really got any comments on the face. I think it's absolutely awesome. I just... Just that tiny, a tiny little bit on that eye there. I just feel like that eye has risen up just a bit too much. So maybe just down just a little bit. See how it's just a tiny bit. And maybe rise that one up just, just a smidgen. So I'll just show the difference. So it's just like from that to that. It's just a tiny, tiny difference. Um, just helps absolutely awesome work this. All right, so let me show you the difference so far. Um, I'll just zoom out a bit and show you. So. Before I started, it was just like that, uh, and then after it's that. You see, I just just wanted to fix just a couple of propor proportions um, and a couple of foreshortening issues, that just tiny ones. Um, yeah, so it's mainly this. This arm was probably, I feel like it was just a little bit bigger than his body, and also with the legs and the waist. So I dropped the waist down a bit, so you can kind of see how I did that. And that leg here, I feel like the, the distance between the, the leg to there, I thought was just a smidgen too long. So I just took that down and took the whole leg in a little bit. And then it was really just these neck muscles here. If you have a look, you can see it, that dip that comes down in there a little bit too sharp. 
So I'd actually have it come up and actually have it like that. And a good, what I would probably do even is, is even go over the top and join that in there. So that, that part is going to join in there and just keep flowing like this. And then you'll have it flow over the shoulder. And I think that would look a lot nicer just to have that continue on um, and don't have the shoulder kind of coming down. Because if you look here, it's just the dip is a bit too, bit too intense. It's like a big V. Same with here a little bit too. I also brought that shoulder up and over. See that shoulder needs to come right up and then tuck up and over a bit more, I think. But yes, if we have that muscle come down and blend, you know, it looks like the skin kind of joins together a bit better. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really good. I love your sketchiness, the sketchy kind of style. I love that. You've done a really good job of these abs as well, I would like to say. Um, and I just, I'm going to do a bit of a take on those. That's my spin on it. But don't, don't think I'm trying to fix something that's wrong because they are looking really good. Like if you saw this, you'd be like, man, he looks ripped. He looks awesome. No one would say there's really any anatomy problem there. But um, I'm going to do my little take on it to show you how we could probably structure them and improve them even more. Um, and let's, let's have a go at that. So I'm just going to do a little bit of an overlay of that same skin tone. All right, so you've got the right idea. Um, it's all good. So I'm going to use yours as a bit of a guide as well. But I just want to point out that um, first thing we should think about is the rib cage and make that kind of a bit of a guide. So like up here, and it, just think of it as something that kind of swoops like a like a wishbone, kind of coming up, kind of coming up, and then you know there, and then back down this way. And I'm only going to sketch it in lightly for now. So I'd probably I'd probably do them a bit more like this, and but but what I would do is have much thicker like shadows, like you've done under the chest here. Um, I really like and under the chin, you see how you go nice and thick with those deep shadows. Let's let's do it with the the abs, and this will really refine them from a distance as well. So if I make all the under parts of the abs like quite thick and dark, it's going to look really really cool. I'll show you what I mean. And when I'm rendering, um, I'd like to I'd like to bring the shadow up more. Um, you see, before it's just a little too light under, like it's a bit more simplified. I'd like to bring it up more uh, and make it more dense because when you when the abs kind of fold over, and you know he's kind of tucked over his body a little bit, there's going to be a little bit more shadow coming up over them abs, especially when it gets down to this sec this second lot down here. There's, they're only going to have a little bit of a highlight on top of those as well. So I like to make sure that they're you know, nice under shadow. So we get those ribs in there like that. And there's a little bit of a muscle here because he's super ripped. He gets like extra muscles that we don't usually see on other people. So, and then this one down here, that's going to have more of a highlight. I didn't think you had it because the pants were up there, but yeah, that's going to be more lit because the light's catching on top of that. And then I'll just like, I'm going to bring that light right under the chest. So we don't want that shadow to come under because Bruce Lee doesn't really have pecs that kind of, that, that, uh, sag or go over they're like so they wouldn't cast too much of a shadow under them so that i want to have a bit more light kind of bringing them right up there like that there we go and just a touch of that there perfect and like i said the bottom part where the belly button would be we're going to catch a bit more light there so i'm actually going to lighten that up more there we go so that's that's probably how i would approach the abs like i said yours were really good really good but i wanted to bring some more shadow underneath where that tuck is so if you zoom out, now it looks like his body is tucked over and you've got more of a shadow where it is, you know, where it's like sucked in a little bit. Um, whereas before it was just, you know, a little more, uh, it didn't have that as much. So I really wanted to try and bring that across more. Um, the rib cage now for, is there, it's formed. You can see where the rib cage would belong under there. And then you've got the abs. Um, yeah. So, and now that shadow under the pec too, I wanted to tidy that up so it, it wasn't blended there. We want more of a highlight there. So, so I'll just show you the difference uh, from a distance here. And you can kind of see now it's more like refined or, or ripped, you know, the anatomy and stuff like that. So, and that's really it, Rob. I, I think that's all I've got to critique on that one. So, so before I started, it was that, and now it's that. So it's just a proportion thing. Um, and 
you know, everything else is fine. Technically, I think you're doing absolutely great. This rendering, especially through the leg, I love it. Absolutely love that cell shaded look through there, mixed with a bit of soft brush. Looks phenomenal. Looks great. So um, I think that's really good. I think your sketchy looks um, working for this piece particularly because it's you know Bruce Lee like it's it, it just look has that nice kind of artistic style to it so it works here. Usually I would probably say do inks and and lines and things like that, but I actually like the way you've done it there. So I think you're fine. Oh, and one more thing I'd like to see just these collarbones, just a little bit more, a uh, bit stronger, bit stronger outlines. Look, the, the outline's stronger. So there. And then dip that shoulder. You can really put a bit of a shadow there where that shoulder hits there. So I like I'd like to see those a little more refined, just just yeah, a bit more of a darker line there. And again, get that tip of that shoulder, you can have a bit more of a shadow there. And I think that works really nicely now. So yeah, there you go. Um yeah, that's a bit better. Definitely that collarbone. You see the difference now, that collarbone there. So again, let's just zoom out. Um and you can see the changes that were made now. So great work. I absolutely love your work, Rob. I can't wait to see some more. Um, you're, you're killing it. You're doing great. You're such a good artist. So yeah, thank you so much for your submission. And uh, yeah, I hope you got something out of that. Okay, time to get into the tier four critiques. Uh, this is just a higher tier on my Patreon where uh, you have more one-on-one -on -one kind of feedback from me. So you're kind of guaranteed some feedback and also the critique which we're about to do in this video. So I'm going to run through this a bit quicker for you and I'll show you what we've got. So first off we've got Cyril. He's done some fan art on Superman versus Shazam just like in the movies. Some really cool movie fan art here. I love this. Uh, so yeah really really nice. Look at that line work. Everything's looking really good. Colors are super vibrant. Love it. Absolutely love this. So I went through and I just made some adjustments to Shazam's face a little bit um, and Superman's as well. Just kind of went through. I fixed that cape on the shoulder, made the kid's eyes a little bit smaller. Okay, uh, I did kind of have an attempt at the hands. I kind of felt like I wanted to see the, the fists and the hands a little bit more. But just realizing it now, I don't think you really need to do that. I mean, it's it's... I just realized yours kind of is pushing over the other side as if Superman's winning. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of pushing towards the kid. Um, at first, I didn't really read that right. I, felt, I thought that the wrists were a little bit too short, but it's totally up to you. This is just an option, so I'm happy for you to keep it however you like. Whoops, there we go. So yeah, don't worry about that too much. Um, I just felt like I wanted to see Superman's knuckle a bit more or his fist just to help it read a little bit better. But yeah, overall, I just think it was just the, the kid's eyes were just a bit too big for me. So I kind of took them down. Shazam's face, uh, I just wanted to tuck those eyes back a little bit more and just adjust the, the skull and the head a little bit better. And Superman as well, I just wanted to fix that head. He needed more skull, just some more room at the back of the head there mainly, if you have a look. So I really wanted to pull that back and it was just the shoulder of the cape. I felt like I just wanted to bring that over a bit more. Apart from that, I really don't have any other other advice. I think this is really good. Love your line work. The colors are great. So yeah, I love your work. Really well done on that one, Cyril. So keep it up, man. Awesome stuff. All right, next is Brett's work, and he did Fantastic Beasts. So oh, I love these movies too. I've watched them all. Um, and this is awesome. I really love this. I think this setup was great. Uh, in the middle of the month or so, you sent me your initials kind of sketch, your setup. I love this composition, absolutely beautiful. Um, there wasn't really much I had to say, to be honest. It was it was just, I think I just, the proportions of him, I made him a little bit taller. That was it. So yours was all about colors as well. Just the overall final kind of adjustments and the final look, really. I just felt like it maybe was a little bit too flat. So I've made everything a lot more vibrant and, you know, I've put some heavier outlines around some of them as well, just to help frame some things a little bit better. And uh, that's really all it needed. Was so just to have a closer look, I think overall it was just the, the final execution of colors that, that was the problem. So if you look at the original, it was, um, I just felt like it was just a little bit too dull. We've got this beautiful kind of creature. You've got all these different types of creatures and I wanted to have some variation. So you've got the greens kind of going against the purples and 
Then you've got these nice blues in the back. Um, even this gold coin really standing out. So I really wanted to make it look fantastical and beautiful, you know, really just play up on that. So um, that's the only thing. Your drawing and your composition was spot on. I think it was great. It was really just the final execution and the color choices, really. That's all it is. So, Brett, I hope that helps. Um, I think you've done an amazing job. And, yeah, even your main guy, I really just wanted to lighten him up and just saturate the skin tones, the colors, the jacket, the, the suit, everything. So, just trying to make it look more, yeah, beautiful overall. Um, and that's it. So, awesome work there, uh, Brett. And I love your work. Keep it up. And next up is Eric, and you've done Dumbledore from, I think it's the Half-Blood Prince in Harry Potter. Um, it, that, that awesome scene where he uses his magic to fend off all these creepers. So, yeah, I love this. This was awesome. You did send me a sketch first off, and I kind of gave you some advice on maybe how we could make his face more dramatic or something like that. So the main thing I fixed in this uh, for the final critique is the colors. I, I just felt like the colors were just the only thing that was off. Um, so I made some color adjustments here, went through, and I also really wanted to see these kind of creepers kind of frame the piece a little bit more. So that'll help you bring in a lot more foreshortening and framing, so it kind of helps, you know, everything's a bit more framed and you get to see what's going on a bit more. I just felt like before they're all a bit too hidden, so I can't really, and down this bottom corner is the only real area you can tell that there's some, some real, like, actual beings that are being, you know, really creepy trying to close in on him. So I felt like if you just have some silhouettes of their arms up a bit more, just make it look like they're getting thrown back um, and they're really getting fended off, that would be awesome. And that would really, really top this off. And it just reads a lot better. So from a distance now, you zoom out, you can still tell that there's a lot of guys coming in on uh, and closing in on uh, Dumbledore there. So that's all it really needed. And the color adjustments were... Um, I, you know, I don't feel like mine still is perfect, but it's, it's kind of just so you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. I wanted a bit more warmth all around the area and then cooler around the edges where it's, it is like a big dark cold room. So yeah, that's the only real advice I had on that one. I think the rest is absolutely awesome. Your flames look great. So you've done a really good job on those. So well done, Eric. I absolutely love your work. You've spent so much time on this, I know. So really, really good effort there. Awesome stuff. All right, next is Jordan. Check this out. One of my absolute favorites. You know me, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. And my Spidey is definitely Tobey Maguire. I love him. That's my favorite one. Um, so this is really good. I, I love this. I was excited when I saw that you were doing this. And earlier in the month, you sent me uh, your initial sketch as well, your roughs. So I kind of guided you with the tentacles i just felt like they needed to be a bit more yeah in the scene a bit more and kind of pointing in at peter so it was a bit more technical but i i did do a lot of color adjustments in the back of the scene i really wanted to have it back lit more like lightened up um so you can really get uh, a sense of all that action i just made an adjustment to his face and the rest was just kind of color adjustments on spidey trying to set the scene and make it more vibrant a bit more ambient and I'll just show you a quick comparison. So that was before and that's now. So it's really just a change in, you know, I want the scene to be more lit up, um, just more daytime or, or even if it is sunset, um, just not so dark. I just feel like from a distance, if you zoom out, it's just very hard to see um, what what's going on there. So if I just, if we just adjust that and you zoom in, you can instantly tell from a distance that that's a spidey scene, that's Doc Ock. Um, very, just much more readable, you know? Um, and yeah, just, just some color adjustments. So, you know, the buildings, I think I added a little bit more blues and, and some warmer colors on some of them. So it's variation. And, uh, before it was just a bit too much of the, the same kind of gray tone all through. Whereas if we have just have some variations and mix ups of just some blue hints and everything else is yeah, more natural and yeah, Spidey's a bit more lit up now. So it's, it's like a bit more vibrant. Um, doesn't have to be this intense. This is just an example, just so you can see. And yeah, that's about it really. And I, I think I just kind of darkened out Doc Ock's kind of suit a bit more. Um, and that face adjustment. So yeah, awesome work, Jordan. I love your stuff and I really, I just hope that helps. Hope that helps. And I'd like to welcome Sasha, um, the bub you go by. 
Um, I, I'd like to welcome you into the tier four as well. So welcome. Um, and here's your submission for a, a Kimbo, I think it's called, from that movie with Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, it's called Guns Akimbo. And yeah, really cool. I love this action scene. She's just blasting some dudes in their junk. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, I like this movie too. I was a big fan of it. I thought it was great. Um, so yeah, let's get into it a little bit. So mainly with yours, I just made some facial adjustments to Daniel Radcliffe over there. Um, I just felt like we just needed to fix up a few things there proportionally. Um, same with the girl's face. She was mostly right. Um, I just wanted to fix up that hair and put a bit more um, volume in it, just a little bit more volume. I also fixed some proportions just in her body. I wanted a bit more of that, dy just a bit more dynamic. And backlit. I really, I really wanted to have her a bit more backlit as well. That, that blue that you've got coming from the building can really, really kind of shine behind her. I reckon that would really help lift out the character more. Um, and you know, you can really see her pose now, even from a distance, you can just see it a bit better. And I really wanted to have that. So, sorry, it's not perfect. You can see the outlines and the warping of the windows there, but you can see the changes that were made here, especially just like her around her chest, her body pose, of course, she's kind of puffing her chest out a little bit more. Uh, it just reads a little bit more of an actiony kind of pose, like pushing it out a little bit more just so it's not too stiff through there. Um, but the rest is fine. I love your your um, your work. The lines are looking really nice. So yeah, it was just more volume through the hair. I just felt like I didn't want to have too many gaps through there. I wanted to have a little bit more volume. And most of her face was mostly fine as well. It was just a couple of little slight adjustments of the face. I made his pose just a bit taller as well. So it's just a few technical things. Um, but overall, still really, really good work. So not too much to say there. So awesome stuff. Can't wait to see some more from you. And next is Jason. You've got the uh, Vision here. This is really cool. So this must be from WandaVision, the show, or you've got him in his classic kind of uh, Vision outfit there. So that's cool to see. Really nice to see. So what I did mainly was it was just some color adjustments. I felt like that yellow was a bit too greenish, so I made it more yellow. Uh, the backdrop, I felt it was just a little bit too realistic compared to the cartoony style you've got. So I kind of did a few filter adjustments to make it a bit more comic-like um, and just to help fit and match your style a little bit more. So, and a few color adjustments and outlines there. So I'll zoom in a bit closer so you can have a look. Um, so yeah, like I said, the background, I just felt like before it was a bit too, um, it's almost pixelated as well. So it's a bit too grainy, you know, it doesn't match this. So that's, that's a kind of a different thing. So I wanted to make sure that we kind of match it. The way I did it was I just did a, a motion blur, a, a horizontal one to really blur out all those kind of pixels. And then I did a, a filter, um, filter gallery and I went cut out and then it just did this. So that was really cool. And then I just made some adjustments to it and you still get that kind of radio wave effect. Um, yeah. And the rest was just kind of you know, I felt like it was a bit too dark and grim, so I wanted to just lighten it up a little bit more to give it that more comic style. So, yeah, that purpley kind of tone as well. And he's kind of lightened up a bit more as well. So, awesome work there, Jason. I love it. I think you've done a good job there. Um, and you should be pretty happy with yourself. Oh, by the way, this was the mid-month kind of adjustments that we made. That was your initial sketch, and then I helped you with a couple of anat anatomy things as well. So, we kind of went through all that as well. And uh, yeah, just, just kind of fixed up a few things. So yeah, awesome work, Jason. Thanks for that. Okay, last up in the Tier 4 Critiques, we've got Abby. And you've done Venom vs. Riot from the, from the first Venom movie, which is really cool here. Have a look at this. So mid-month or earlier in the month, um, Abby sent me her initial sketch. And then we kind of just went through it. It was mainly a composition thing, I think it was. I just felt like we needed just a little to make it a little bit more dynamic. So I used your riot, same same character. I just grabbed it, I blew it up, and I just put a little angle in it. And I made, I changed that hand just a bit to bring it up. I wanted the arms to be pointing up toward Venom to get that kind of aggression. So this is your same bombing knocker. I just inverted it and pointed it towards him. Same with the head. I just pushed it up and looked looked up a little bit more, kind of warped it out a little bit, a little bit more body mass. And same with Venom. I used your same Venom. Um, I just tucked his legs up more, put a little bit more mass into them. Same with your hands. I kept your hands and your head and everything, and I kind of just put more mass, made him bigger. 
yeah, just added some more perspective. So it was really just a compositional thing. And then you've sent me your final submission, which is this one here. You've put your colors in. It was mainly just like a color adjustment thing. Uh, and the, you wanted to have everything kind of backlit. I found it really hard to see Venom. And a little bit of rendering. I'd love to see some rendering from you a little bit more. Just like one or two levels of shading. Um, and I'd actually really recommend rim lighting. So right around the edges of your characters to lighten them up. And I'll just show you, so what I mean about all that is, have a look at Venom here. So all I did was put, you've, you've already actually got it. You started to do it already. See that edge light there? I'd really go a little bit more intense just for this one, just because it's almost like he's got a big beam of light behind him now. Uh, I also thickened up the, the overall outline. So if you look at your outlines, I wanted to thicken them up more. Uh, but it was Riot that I did the, the changes to. Because my initial thing was the backdrop was just dark, it was too black, and I couldn't see Venom. He sa he stands out well, Riot, but I couldn't see Venom. So what I did was I did that backlight thing, and I really had more of a glow behind Venom, and then I darkened it a lot before behind Riot, so that gradient. It's just a play up on that gradient. And that made a big difference. But it's it's really, I, I felt like he needed definitely needed some kind of rendering through the body. I'd love to see that uh, from you, Abby, to try and go pretty far in and do some like thick, like one level of cell shading. Um, that might be something fun for you to try out, I think, in the future. And just, I think you'll you'll have a lot of fun with it and it'll be something that you can really add to your, you know, artistic abilities as well. I think that would really help you to add another level of cell shading to your thing. There's even the lighting. So I went and did the lighting. So on his chest here, Instead of having that rim light there, I brought it right in. So it really brings it right in over his chest, like quite bold. So really come in. And I think that is really what would uh, benefit your stuff as well. So I'd love to see that kind of thing. So there, I hope that helps, um, Abby. And yeah, like I said, this is kind of backlit more. So now we get a clear look at Venom and Riot stands out as well. So awesome stuff, Abby. You've been doing really well. I love watching you grow. You've been doing really good. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. That's a wrap up. We've done it. All done. Uh, movie and TV fan art. So you guys have all done such a good job there. I've loved seeing all of the submissions. Uh, that was a lot of fun too. You got to do some critiques. So I hope you all got something out of that. I'm excited for next month's theme, by the way. We're going to do Halloween. So every year in my Patreon on these monthly projects, I do Halloween for sure. So I've actually set out a horror theme and this one's going to be called Horror Art. So this will be monthly project 15. That's what we've got coming up. And uh, yeah, people are going to do, uh, you know, from your favorite horror movie or a slasher, whatever it is. And you're going to do some fan art or something on those movies. So that'll be great. Definitely suited for Halloween. I've got a bit of a surprise myself that I haven't really announced to the public yet, but I'm doing one too. So we've got like a nice big horror piece coming so you got that to expect i can't wait to see what everyone else comes up with uh it's going to be a good month and for everyone out there if you want to join in jump onto my patreon and join in on these monthly projects they're a lot of fun i've designed them so that they help motivate you and help you grow as an artist so it just keeps the juices flowing so there's always a new theme something to draw every month and you've also got a chance for critiques as well all right everyone i'll leave you to it now uh, we're going to finish up now. So yeah, thank you for watching and yeah, I'm looking forward to next month. See you all later.